Lara Croft. She's a British Hollywood vil villain style character who happens to be, you know, not actually trying to destroy the world, but just going after artifacts for her own ends. I'm Toby Gard and I'm the uh, creator of Lara Croft. For me, the core of Tomb Raider is discovering the mystery, uh, uncovering things that are, you know, really gobsmacking and being impressed by it. So, I mean, originally, when I was thinking about Lara Croft, it was very much the opposite of what game characters were like at the time. There's a lot of sarcastic, sort of monosyllabic sort of heroes. And I wanted Lara to just be the opposite of that. So I wanted her to be this extremely refined, genteel lady who, um, who just had this steely disposition who, you know, would quite happily kill you as soon as look at you. And that kind of, that terrifying danger underneath the surface of extreme refined, you know, pleasantry seemed like an excellent choice. With this game, I think Lara's main, probably the most signature new thing that's going on for her is her new grapple, which she can use in a variety of ways. She kind of uses it to help her solve puzzles and she uses it to some extent as a weapon and she, uh, um, she can use it to swing around the place as well. So she can actually jump and grapple uh, because we, we have a physics-based world, so there's, she can use it to really affect the environment in, in all sorts of different ways. You can be quite creative with it. It's a good tool. In Tomb Raider Legend, we're going to both answer questions and raise new ones. Uh, the biggest you know, mystery of this game, you will get an answer to. Uh, you will leave, you know, satisfied. Uh, my name's Riley Cooper and I'm the lead designer on Tomb Raider Legend. So we've really gone for uh, a dynamic experience in Tomb Raider Legend and a couple ways that that's most, you know, realized is interactive and in the aesthetic presentation, the screen is alive. So, uh, you know, when you're in the jungles, you'll see uh, birds flying, you'll see uh, insects flying about, the foliage will be moving in the wind, um, you'll hear other animals, so it's just uh, completely lush and real and believable and just alive. Because of the full physics system we have, you're able to fully interact with the world and create uh, situations that are much more uh, just real and believable and kind of awe-inspiring than you ever were able to do in previous Tomb Raiders. In, in, in going into the tombs, they're just much more real and much more alive than they've ever been. So really, we just took we took what made the franchise great, focused on that, and made that all it could be. So if you you know if you love Tomb Raider because of who Lara Croft is, because of what she can do, because of the fact that she's an artifact hunter and she engages in these mysteries that have supernatural elements, um, that's exactly what you're going to get from this game, and it's going to focus on that. Well, Tomb Raider's always been about exploration and finding those remote corners of the world that the world has forgotten about. My name is Eric Lindstrom, and I'm a game designer and story editor. Worldwide excursions going around different exotic places, and usually to places that no one's ever been before, or at least not since the tombs were built thousands of years ago or tens of thousands of years ago. You go to just about every continent, and every locale type, so you're going to be exploring completely different spaces with each level. Um, one of the places we go, probably the most important place we go, is the Himalayas. And for fans of the series, you'll have heard that something happened to Lara in the Himalayas, which made her who she is. And we're going to go to the Himalayas, and you're going to find out what that was. Um, the other locations include, you know, jungles. We're going to go to Peru. We're going to go to Bolivia. We're going to be in uh, South Africa, we're going to be everywhere, so um, just about everything you would imagine. In, in Tomb Raider Legend, uh, we're going back to the roots of the franchise. We're, we're going back to the tombs, that's where Lara you know, does her thing, that's where, she, um, that's where she lives, that's where she you know, pursues all the things she pursues. One of the things that we have found most interesting in the old Tomb Raiders that we brought back a lot of is finding ancient mechanisms. That means you have to have traps, you have to have puzzles. That's what makes the tombs you know, compelling. That's what makes them what they are. So finding large-scale mechanisms. Um, toppling pillars, restarting ancient ma machinery. The interactions you have in those tombs, it's less about pulling a switch in one room and then running to a door five rooms away. And it's more about solving real dynamic puzzles in uh, a given location. Um, which is partly challenge. It's partly dangerous. 
and at the end you get to see this big thing in operation and they often have have large scale effects in the original tomb raider it was my goal to um, make a character who was very solid, who animated very smoothly and didn't have a lot of snaps and jerkiness to her. And that, that was because, again, a reaction to what was around at the time, which is that people didn't care too much about animations. They didn't care about whether or not people's feet slipped around the world and all sorts of stuff like that. There's a huge step forward in the animation technology we're using in this game because, you know, whereas before Lara would smoothly animate, but she would be very sort of unresponsive, we now have that. Um, smooth animation but with with great responsiveness and great intuitiveness as well. We animate everything by hand for Lara and we, uh, we're actually overlaying masses of different animations together to create the sort of smooth and um, fluid movement that, we, that Lara has in the game. Another thing that we've been doing that's a big step forward for this game is the quality to the actual model itself. We've got um, a lot more uh, detail not only in, in terms of her skin and her costumes but in terms of her gear like the actual individual parts of equipment that she uses are, are modeled separately so that you can actually see them and they're actually attached to her and she actually physically uses them, takes them off her belt and stuff. Yeah, we've got the, 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 the poly count on the model is, is quite outrageous really. We have 10,000 or so polys on, on Lara alone. We've got all sorts of detail on her as well. We, like she gets dirty when she runs around and she gets wet when she goes into water and she'll um, react to things like being cold or um, she knows that she's wet and might shake herself when she gets out of the water and stuff like this. So she's a, very much more trying to create a um, character that's, that's very alive, that seems very, very real when you're playing her. One of the things we're trying to do here is, is to create a, an experience that goes a little sort of above what you have seen in normal games. We're trying to create not an experience that's just action oriented. We're not trying to create an experience that's just adventure oriented. But we're trying to create an experience that is almost emotionally oriented. My name is Charles Foreman. I am the composer of Tomb Raider Legend. We're taking this very well-established brand, Tomb Raider, and really trying to, to sort of put in the next generation. What we did was to go back and do analysis of the old games, the prior games. Um, there are six Tomb Raider games that we went really deep into. And we're trying to understand what they did right and what they did wrong. One of the things we did when we went back and uh, analyzed the old games was actually to look at the storyline of Lara. And what we're trying to do in this game, without revealing too many details, is trying to go back in her past and try to understand how she became who she is. I think one of the, the sort of common problems in games is normally you talk about the star and you have a very sort of slim storyline that just goes through, but in this one we, we, we took a step deeper and tried to, to recreate an emotional experience. Uh, I went back and looked at the soundtracks for the previous games uh, and how they worked in the game. Again, what they did right and what they did wrong. We um, went back to the movies, the two movies, and tried to look at that soundtrack as well. And we sort of established a template for what we wanted to do in this game. So in particular what we did was we, we decided that all main characters should have their own theme. Um, all destinations have their own themes as well. We're using what we call a signature instrument from that particular region of the world. There's a lot of different destinations in the game. We actually went out and did actual recordings of them. What we tried to do here was actually to go and to discover a new dimension of how you can do game scarring. It's something that I call micro scarring. The idea is that you sort of if there's a slight change in the environment, if there's a slight change in the lightning, if there's a slight change in the camera movement, what happens with the music is that it actually it sort of changes or adapts to it. Let's say she starts to like just walk normally, right? So the music will be slow. Once she starts running, the music will adapt to that. Uh, you'll have maybe a, a pillar breaking down with some stones coming down her. That's going to be scored as well. So the idea of microscoring is to take all the different small aspects in the game and compose for them actually. So we need to microscore all the different things here in this environment and actually make a full musical experience out of it. 